when you don't have a house, you don't have house insurance and mortgage and repairs and maintenance and utility bills that that covers your Airbnb cost. When you don't have a car and car insurance and car payments and gas that covers your Uber or your Lime scooters. I'm not saving for vacation because life has become a perpetual vacation. Welcome to the Bucket List Life Podcast with Trav Bell, the world's number one bucket list expert. Bucket List Life's mission is to help you get off the treadmill, stop Groundhog Days, hack your habits, and live a regret-free life. Because we know life's way too short not to live your bucket list life. So please welcome your host, Trav Bell, the Bucket List Guy. Hey, Bucket Listers, welcome to another episode of the Bucket List Life podcast, and this is going to be a two-for-one today. Today, I've got Cameron Herald and Ashley Perona. How are you going, guys? Good, Travis. How are you? Any better, I'd be twins. There you go. I don't know why that's even a statement, but uh, Matt, where are you guys at the moment? Uh, we're currently in Paris, France, for the first, or it's my first time. And that, that actually is always one of those fun questions. I wake up in the morning trying to figure out where I am half the time too. Well, look, we're going to get into your bucket list life, the namesake of this podcast, because you are li- you both living life large publicly. It's incredibly inspiring. Let's be honest, you're not doing the hostel backpacker thing. You're not van lifing it and, uh, you know, <laughs> but... Uh, you're doing it in a completely different way, but you are uh, definitely digital nomads, that's for sure, which I absolutely love. And where have you just been? <laughs> not this morning, <laughs> like not, not this morning, because you probably went there. If you're in Paris, are you in Montmartre or you? Um, where it is the region? I think we're in the second we're... Agron- agronment, second or first. Yeah, we're very near Les Halls. Right, so you've probably had a croissant and a coffee already, I'm tipping. I think that's going to happen afterwards. I just flew in last night from Dublin, so I, I only got here at midnight last night. Oh, dear. Okay. Well, um, yeah. well, okay. So where have you just been? You know, where have you just traveled from? Oh, wow. Um, I have to, like, remember and almost pull up our schedule. <laughs> that's I manage why a whole life. Your, <laughs> that's why you do your bucket list publicly, because where the hell have I been? Where have I just woken up? Okay. Right? Uh, we do about 20 countries a year. That's why. And we just hit, like, so many events. But I was just in uh, northern Italy because we're really craving a Western European hub. And so I was doing a whole bunch of research up in northern Italy, like Verona, Lake Garda, Lake Maggiore, um, Switzerland and Lugano, Lausanne. And so I just completed like a two week road trip across northern Italy to kind of find potential hubs of where we might want to live. That was a pretty sweet Airbnb too that you put on your Insta. I, I like that. Shit view. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> well, we also crossed off a bucket list up there too. We were in the Dolomites and we went paragliding and crossed off a big one in the Dolomites. It was incredible. Wow, what a place to do it. Um, yeah. where, and where next after after Paris? After Paris, where do we go? We go, we go for- to Turkey. We go to Turkey because um, we were just in Ibiza for the Intelligent Change Summit hosted by Alex and Mimi Icon. They started the Five Minute Journal and it was their second uh, summit they hosted in Ibiza. And while we were there, we met a whole bunch of amazing um, humans that told us about this Harvest Series Festival that's happening in Turkey at the uh, Six Senses. And so we're going to pop over there and go to this uh, festival for the first time or summit for the first time. Look, you can tell the listeners and watchers of this podcast that you're in Ibiza, Ibiza, Ibiza for other reasons, if you want. And you, you know, he did a three day bender. You can say that. Like, we're cool. <laughs> <laughs> we wish. Uh, we actually are both sober. I quit about June 2020, and um, he just crossed over a year. Yeah, we still I still use some psychedelics for some journeys. Our three <laughs> our three day bender though was a three day bender on health and spirituality and wellness and sexuality. It was a, an incredible conference. And I think that's part of what we're doing with our bucket list is trying to pick these amazing events that are not the boring business conferences where you just sit and talk about growing your company, but you're around amazing people doing amazing things and and kind of learning about amazing stuff. So yeah, harvest in Turkey is the next one. Now 
Cameron, did your uh, one-year sobriety uh, coincide with a birthday? No, it started because um, Ashley actually quit four years ago. Coming up on four years right now, right? Yep, in June. Yeah, and when, when she decided to quit, I had slow, started to realize that I was drinking too much. I was drinking a bottle of wine every single day, never more than a bottle, but always a full bottle. And trying to prove to myself that I didn't have a problem, I would take one month off every year and one week off every month. But I started to realize that I probably was using it more than I should and I had a lot of willpower. Um, so the one month just continued and I started saying, you know, I reserve the right to have a glass of wine with a, with a meal at some point if I want to. But I just decided to let it stretch out and I just had a double, I was in Dublin and I mean, when you're in Ireland, you have to have a Guinness, but they have Guinness, they have Guinness zero now. So I had I had a, my first kind of non-alcoholic beer and it was incredible. I had one Guinness zero with this Irishman, and but I had no desire to have a real Guinness and no desire to have any drinks. So it's been good. I share with you that goal because I've just gone over a year too. That's why I asked. Oh, yeah. I turned fifty eighth of May and I just went eh, don't really need it. And and my partner she hasn't drank drank for uh, years and years and years, so she's never drunk in my life. Yeah, I'm not missing it at no. all. Still, but still, we've been together. So, yeah, it is what it is. And you probably value health more than anything these days, right? So, I won't ask your ages unless you want to volunteer them, but I certainly do. We kind well, of we straddle you. <laughs> happy, uh, happy belated birthday, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. It's your birthday of, month. Yeah, 8th of May. Listeners, watchers, write that date down. Grab a paper and pen. 8th of May. Uh, feel free. You know, seeing gifts. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just turned uh, 38 myself in uh, March. Yeah, right, right. Very cool. Cameron, <laughs> don't want to... I'm, fi- I'm 58. 58. Well, what's your skincare routine, mate? I'm unbelievable, you know. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, uh, tell me, what do you guys, because you're traveling so much... You know when you fly into a country and you've got to fill in an incoming passenger card and you've got to put in occupation, you know, in, into a, like a box that's like about that big and you do all these things. What do you, you know, Ashley, what do you put? To be honest, I'm pretty lazy and I probably put self. Self? Just self? Self-employed, yeah. No one even <laughs> checks it anyway. I get it. But, you know, yeah, or travel. Like what's the point? Employed, travelpreneur, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Cameron? Yeah, I do the same. I put self-employed, so I just put self. That that fends them off, doesn't it? Just okay. I, I've always learned that when you're traveling at the borders, the less is more. Yes. The, the more that you tend to explain. I, so I'm the master of the one-word answer at immigration, too. Where are you going? Turkey. Why are you going? Vacation. Like, I just try not to give them too much to probe into. Otherwise, you're there all day, and it can go sideways. Even though I'm not doing anything wrong, it was just you'd rather not give them stuff to dig into. I mean, you guys are into minimalism. I get that. I read that, and we'll talk about that. Uh, but self, you're not even saying self-employed. Well, that's, I think it's a short form for it. Yeah. Well, there's something. Might be, a, might be a North American thing, yeah. but a lot of people just put self. Well, I, that, I did not know that, and I'm the bucket list guy. So I'm, uh, I better, I've am i learned something today. Writing what, notes. what do you put? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm self Let's just go with that. Yeah, there you go. No, I've been trying to fit. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe I think it's the ego. Fucking this all extraordinaire. This. Yeah, 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 yeah. Haven't you seen my book? You know, like it, all in that little spot. Anyway, <laughs> um, God damn it. I'm talking to someone who's done like, what, five books, six books now, Cam? Six books, yeah. Oh, Crazy. my God. And work, working on another one. Let, let's get the business stuff out of the way. Cameron, you're known as the CEO Whisperer, which is what I love. And before this podcast, you said, oh, I'd, you know, don't want to focus on me. I want to focus on Ashley, which we will. How did you arrive to be the CEO Whisperer and an author of six books, of which uh, The Miracle Morning you did uh, for entrepreneurs, which you did with our uh, mutual friend Hal Elrod, Double Double, Free PR, Meeting Suck, do they just do don't need to read the book it's just yep (laughs) love that second in command and why i am very appreciative of getting you on is because of vivid vision which will circle back but what led you to become the ceo whisperer and do what you know be in paris 
speaking around the world as you do. Well, and the vivid vision is probably the core anchor for our bucket list life too. So it really weaves in perfectly. Uh, I was doing a speaking event in California, one of many that I've done. I've now been paid to speak in 29 countries, and I've been paid to speak on every single continent, including Antarctica. I was handed a check oh, in Antarctica. Hang on, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll get to it. Now, okay. a running joke that I've got as a keynote speaker as well, and one of the things on my business bucket list is to speak on every continent. Okay. Now- and my running joke is I've spoken on uh, six of the seven, is there seven continents, except for Antarctica. So if you know someone in Antarctica, let me know. I will. I know a couple of groups that do it. And that was what happened with me was I was originally going to organize a group of CEOs to go to Antarctica. I'd negotiated with a bunch of boats. I'd figured out the logistics. Um, and... Then a friend of mine came along and said he was organizing a group of CEOs to go to Antarctica. And I'm like, wow, I'd love to go, but I've always wanted to be a speaker there. He goes, well, I was going to ask you to speak anyway. And I said, here's the deal. I've been paid to speak on all seven continents. He goes, no, I'll pay you to speak there. So that was the deal. It was just having it in my mind, thinking about it, articulating it, and then making it come true. So yeah, we were down there with a guy named Yannick Silver and a group called Maverick Adventures. Yannick was one of the first CEOs that I coached back in 2008. And uh, when we were in Antarctica with a group of CEOs sitting watching, I did my speaking event about growing people and growing leaders. And he walked up to me and handed me the check and we crossed off the bucket list. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I know Yannick. I know, well, I don't know Yannick, but I know of him. He's a legend. Uh, you've just become my new role model, mate. Thank you. There you go. And there's not many of us that have done it. I'm not the first. I realized afterwards there's, there's been a handful of people that have done it, but there's certainly not very many. Mostly are in the science space for sure. Anyway, yeah. The, so I was doing a speaking event in California and the publisher of Forbes magazine, the actual publisher of The Real Magazine, saw me speaking a number of times and he was there to introduce me for this next speaking event. And he just decided to talk about me as the CEO whisperer. And he also said that I was the number one business speaker that he'd ever seen. And then he kind of stumbled around it saying, you should never do that. You're going to curse the person. And this is someone who's seen pretty much everybody do business speaking events as the publisher of Forbes. So yeah, when Rich, when Rich Carlgaard gave me the title, we just stuck with it. Love it. Love it. What was your, what was your businesses leading up to that? That you've been involved. I had in. four companies that I got very well known for building. Um, one was a, a what became the largest house painting company in the world. It was College Pro Painters. Um, in fact, I hired Kimball Musk, Elon's younger brother, to work for me, and then his cousin Peter Reeve, who built Solar City. So I got known for impacting a couple of very young entrepreneurs, but also having built a big business. Then I was a partner in the franchising group for what became the largest collision repair chain in the world. It's known as Gerber Auto Collision in the United States and Void Auto Body in Canada. Then I was president of a private currency company that we built up and sold. And then I joined my best friend, Brian, who'd been building the Rubbish Boys, and we changed the name over to 1-800-GOT-JUNK. I joined him as employee number 14 as his COO, and we built that out to $106 million in six years, 3,000 employees system-wide. We opened up in Australia. And in building out that company, I started to get some notoriety around the fact that I'd done it a number of times and these businesses were getting really good brands. So I was being asked to speak and the entrepreneurs organization started to ask me to start speaking in a bunch of their chapters. I spoke with them in Australia three different times in about six cities. So the, so the entrepreneurs organization started getting me speaking all over the world and that started to build my brand as a thought leader and a speaker and then, you know, writing books. Very cool, very cool. My uh, my son uh, used to work for one eight hundred. Is it got junk? Got junk, yeah. I think in Australia we call it eighteen hundred got junk because you use the different format of the number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mentioned to Charlie. I remember uh, when I was because I read your book and da, 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 and did. So if I'm coming across as as like, oh, I didn't know that. No, I did know that. And uh, yeah. And he's going, oh, wow, really? Yeah. So he was impressed, you know, so I've got uh, credibility because um, <laughs> I've got John the show. Um, but no, that's epic, man. Like, And do you still get approached about these sort of positions? 
Um, I still get asked to come and, and work for companies in the COO role for sure or CEO role. And, and I just say you can't afford me. And I have, I have no desire to go back and be operational. I run my own company to this day. I've been running my own company for, you know, the last 17 years. So I have no desire to go in and run someone else's business now. Yeah. So as a thought leader, thought leadership practice, you've got the speaking keynote, you've got a coaching one-on-one and group coaching. Yeah, we have a group coaching program that is the big focus. And then I also do some one-on-one coaching with some select companies. And then I also have an organization called the COO Alliance, which is a large network of second commands globally. We have another mastermind called the Ops Spot, which is a mastermind community for people in operations roles. And then I have an online leadership course called Invest in Your Leaders, which is one that every company can sign up multiple people for. And, and six books. I can't, mate, I, and you're trying to live your bucket list uh, with young Ashley here, and um, I've got to read your books, man, because you're doing something right. Um, you had the, you fit it all in, so. <laughs> um, but your latest book, Second in Command? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Well-received? Very well received. Yeah, it's being it's it's really kind of launched much faster and much bigger to um, a lot of groups of entrepreneurs. There's major groups buying multiple copies and giving them out to all of their members. Um, but it was the one that I probably had the most individual IP for that was just very different from other books on the market. You know, so I'm I'm talking about how do you recruit a second in command, whether it's a COO or a president or vice president of operations, director of ops, whatever. How do you bring them into your company? How do you build that killer relationship with them? And how do you leverage that second in command role? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of the second in command in our bucket list life. We got the captain sitting right here. That's it. And and with in regards to that, Captain, <clears throat> can you, uh, from now, or like after this, you, just between you and me, not everyone else, is can you handle my Instagram and, and, my, and my website from now on? Because yours looks really freaking good. And uh, I don't know if you do it, but or you got one hell of a team around you. You, you do it, don't you? Ah, amazing! Thank you so much. No, um, it's, it's like really good. And the your ever wonder travel uh, is it dot com? Yep. Yeah, it's like super cool. I love the timeline thing and the, the sharing. And we're gonna get into gonna get into that. Um, when so Ashley, let's pivot. When did you start bucket list? You know, what's your background leading up to now? Uh, my background is I was born and raised in Arizona, kind of stayed there for college. I got a great opportunity scholarship wise with um, Arizona State. So I stayed there. And then, you know, I come from a very conservative family. So I kind of got told this rhetoric of, you know, it isn't really safe to go travel. You're a single female. I'm going to get sex trafficked. Liam Neeson's going to have to come save me. <laughs> As he does. I mean, he does with everyone. So right? <laughs> um, so I really bought into this whole corporate America and climbing the, the corporate ladder. So I actually was the definition of just work hard, play hard to the point where I invested so much in the companies that I worked for. I have a tech background, Salesforce specifically, that I worked so hard growing these other companies that I kind of like burned myself out and I didn't even have energy to even consider planning, you know, personal vacations or going and traveling. So I would say that my country count was about five or six back in 2018, 2019. Really? Oh, you have gone nuts, haven't you? Shit. You've gone. Now we're at, I'm at 59. Uh, And I'm at 72. And we've done 49 together. So fun fact, and please feel free, watchers and listeners, to uh, research this. Americans hold the least amount of passports per capita in the world. Yeah. And probably the least amount of passport stamps of anyone in the world, too. They just don't go anywhere. Even if they have one passport, they don't go anywhere. The average employee takes uh, has two weeks off. Is that still the go? Like if you're employed, you have two weeks off. But we have yeah, four. Yeah, two, two, three, we have two, four three weeks. Entire. Legally, we have four. Wow. It's amazing. Would that be a contributing factor? Don't know. Probably. I don't know. A lot of, uh, it depends on who you speak with. But yeah, I mean, you'll get the huge range. Like people are like, oh my God, that's so cool. We want to do exactly what you're doing. You're a huge inspiration to like, why? 
why why would you travel like everything i need is right here <laughs> it's like yeah yeah well, clearly you haven't traveled <laughs> yeah and it's the danger i think it's the news cycle in north america so as a canadian and i've lived in the united states for a number of years the united states news cycle is very us centric so they're bombarded with all things us all the time the canadians read about the us we read about europe we read about asia constantly australia the same thing you read about china in Europe, it's all about Europe, multiple languages. So you're so exposed to the rest of the world that I think the wonder of what's out there might pull. Um, I think that's certainly one of them. Well, and the news in the U.S. is very like if it bleeds, it leads. So if I'm honest, I was just having a conversation with my mom who's always worried about my safety and traveling. And she's super thankful that Cameron is with me. But even she, based off of what's being portrayed on the news with all of the different conflicts going around in the world, like he views the world as a very scary place. And, you know, we're in it and it's like it, it couldn't be further from the truth. Of course, we're not going to go to those particular areas right now, um, but I've never felt a sense of, you know, being unsafe. My, uh, I, now I forget, I forget her name. She's on Instagram as well. First... Uh, she's Amer uh, she's American, um, but uh, but Nigerian background. First black woman to go to every country on earth by herself. Wow! 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 Cool. It's like <laughs> I can't wait to speak to her. How yeah, that's legit. That's legit. Yeah, yeah. Ashley, you've been to freaking you've been to the Congo, you've been to Estonia, Uruguay, and. Even New Zealand, which is kind of another state of Australia, to be honest, will say that to a New Zealander. Yeah, I'm like, don't say that to the Kiwi. <laughs> not, not Australia, and you call yourself koala on your uh, <laughs> on on everything. So, and that QT, we won't we won't even go there yet. But a bit, but koala, like, mate, what's the go? What's the go? So I. I have been trying to get to Australia forever. And um, New Zealand was probably actually one of my very first international trips. I did that one in 2005 in between my freshman and sophomore year in college at Arizona State. And it was through a volunteer company called International Student Volunteer. So they had a number of countries that you could pick to do a month. And I have a non-biological uncle that would send me postcards from all around the world for, for his job. And to this date, I still have um, all of the postcards he sent in storage. And that's sort of what uh, kindled my love with travel. Like I got all these postcards when I was little. I'm like, I want to go there. I want to go there. So I asked him and he said out of the list, go to New Zealand. And so I picked it. And for a month, we were there, 45 people around the United States met up in LAX. We never met one another, went over there, did two weeks of volunteering, like chopping wood to heat our water for a shower, uh, planting 800 plants in a park, clearing out a trail to a waterfall, pot, uh, potted seedlings with uh, handicapped children. And then the next two weeks, we hopped down all the way to Queenstown in a bus, hostel to hostel every two, three days. And we did like black water rafting, white water rafting. We hiked at Franz Joseph Glacier. We like people did bungee jumping, Jeff skydiving. Yeah. yeah. In, in New yeah, Zealand, so. especially out of Queenstown, you can do be, before breakfast, you can do, you know, 50 life threatening things in New Zealand, right? 50 bucket list items before breakfast. I tell you, that, that is like where bucket lists were actually invented, I think. It's just so I extreme, so, isn't it? It's so We're full hoping on. that his youngest son does his exchange there. He's got the opportunity to do a school exchange, I think, next year. And he has a list of countries. And I, I secretly was like, hey, New Zealand. Yeah. And I would love <laughs> to go back because it's been a long, long time. And I left there with about six really good friends that we still keep in contact. Cool, so, cool. But Australia, like I have been wanting to go there for so long. I was actually supposed to start traveling on my own in April 2020. And then Cameron was going to come visit. So I was going to go to Japan. And that was right in April. And so uh, everything kind of blew up. That's when the cruise ship kind of got stuck in the harbor for a while. So I tried to move pivot to Australia 
and I was going to Melbourne. They redirected me to Sydney and I'm like, what is going on? I called American and they're like, um, you got to tell us, I have a manager on the line that'll give you your points back. Let me know if you want them. And I'm like, yes, I do. And by the end of the week, they're like, all planes are grounded for six months. So I still haven't gotten back, but we are probably going to go there at the end of this year or beginning of next year. And I, I like want to spend three months because I want to go all the way around. <laughs> oh, look, yeah, it's a big freaking country. And fun fact too, like on that, um, and say hi. You know, when you're down, I'm at the start of the Great, Great Ocean Road down here. In, uh... That's such a beautiful road too. I've driven that years ago. I'm going to be there. We'll be there for sure because I have to do a speaking event in Melbourne in February. So. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Let's hook up. Um, so uh, do you surf? Any of you surf at all? I've only done it once in Costa Rica, and that was really fun. Um, we actually built a house for a teacher that was teaching like seven grades all at the same time. And part of the adventure was learning how to surf. And we did a whole bunch of fundraising through Salesforce. But I would love to pick it up more. Now, I've Ultra. tried it a few times very poorly. Now, Cameron or probably already knows this, but uh, you can't actually hug a koala, koala, <laughs> in the state of Victoria. So you can act like when you're in Queensland, which is the northern state, and and New South Wales, mainly Queensland, go to the Corumban, Corumban uh, sanctuary, and that's where you get the the stock standard koala photo, and you know that, and they're really stoned because they're on the, on the leaves all day, and. Yeah. Um, but that's where, it, but yeah, you can't hold a koala in our state for some reason. So just FYI. Right. Oh, look, and I, you know, like this is my 2020, I, thought, I call it a bucket list board. Great. And Love it. This is the, because there's no like piles of cash or freaking, anim, you know, um, affirmations on there. You know, save that for the tattoos, right? Yeah. And, uh, and I was doing this the other day and it's like, yeah, 2024 and, and, You've probably seen that logo, Cameron. Million dollar MDRT, MDRT. Yep. yep. I just the reason I spoke the reason I just spoke at MD at in Ireland was someone saw me speak at top of the table for MDRT uh eight years ago and he booked me to come and speak in Ireland. There you go. So that's you know, it's a big event, the uh million dollar round table. And uh I had Chad Willardson, you may know. Um he he said uh he he does. Uh, he's got Pacific Capital over there in California, and he um, does financial advice for ultra high net wealth people. And written about in Ten uh, X is easier than Two X with Dan Sullivan and Dan and, and Ben, yeah, and Ben. So anyway, showed him that, and he goes, "Oh, I'm speaking at uh, Million Dollar Man Table in September. After I do it, uh, I'll let you know." And I'll have some. I'll have have a conversation with uh, the people that know. So there you go. You got to publicly share your bucket list, which we'll talk about right now. Let's publicly, like by publicly sharing your bucket list, which you guys have on your website. It's an active rolling bucket list. Why share it publicly? Yeah. So I think uh, Cameron pretty much inspired me to write a bucket list because he had one. So. When we started dating in 2018, because I definitely was not living my bucket list to dream life at that point. I was like just barely holding on in corporate America, reaching burnout. <laughs> so he uh, challenged me to sit down and write out 100 things. So I actually went back and kind of did an inventory of my life. And I put down the ones that I had considered bucket list worthy. And then I filled out the rest to like 100 and, you know, in full transparency, like people can be eitherly super, either super inspired, curious, or going through a lot of different challenges like we all have. So I think just putting it out there makes it more real. It makes it more approachable being vulnerable. So we're, we're pretty open books and that's why we kind of put it out there because we want people to not live to work but work to live and really prioritize the bucket list and do those experiences because that's what you remember on your deathbed. It's not, hey, I, I was grinding 80 hours a week at a corporate job. Like everyone wishes that they had more time to go travel, see things, do things. Like 
Yeah, it's like, like us us sharing it and Ashley sharing it publicly on her Ever Wander Travel website and, and sharing all our bucket list experiences is really nothing to do with bragging about having done them. It's actually to inspire other people to go do them. We're already doing them. Like, it's, we're already doing them. I, I do get that sense. Sorry to interrupt you, but I really want to make a point of this too. Like it's not bragging at all. And some someone in a bad place... Uh, would be full of envy, would be full, oh, that's all well and good for you. But it doesn't come across like that. It comes across incredibly inspiring. Well, and you can do so many good bucket list things right in your backyard in your own city without spending a dollar and without having to go anywhere. We did an incredible bucket list life trip that Ashley organized in seven states in the US where we just went on hikes and hiking is free. And we drove to these incredible destinations and did these unbelievable hikes. So you can do stuff right in your own city. Yeah, what I was saying to it, you know, like COVID was fantastic for my business. You know, no groups coming together, <laughs> no groups coming together, no two groups to speak to. Uh, and I'm known as the bucket list guy. How, how well do you reckon that went? Not at all. But I was saying to, you know, did switch to doing a lot of stuff online, obviously, and virtual presentations. But I kept saying, and I'm pretty sure you can appreciate this camp, was be a tourist in your own hometown first. It's the spirit of adventure that we're trying to get across, right? Yeah, my parents actually were the opposite of Ashley's. My parents did explore, but one of the things that they taught, told us, and they were very cognizantly telling us this at a young age, was they wanted us to see every single province in Canada before we started to explore the rest of the world because they wanted us to see what we had in our own country. So by the time I was 13 years old, we'd driven across the country in both directions and we saw it all. And that gave me the sense of wonder as to what was out there for sure. You know, Ashley, what's the, you, you, on your website, you, I love the explore, experience, evolve. What does that actually mean to you? I think it's like pretty ex explanatory. Um, I love what's alliteration. The evolve, evolve. Wow. So, I mean, I don't think I've met anyone that's done extensive travel that has not come out a changed human. Um not only just because of the travel, but also just the human condition in wanting to continuously evolve and self-actualize and hopefully become a better person. So like just all of these experiences with different cultures and meeting people, like I do, I just feel like I'm a much more well-rounded, grounded, uh, spiritual, like you you end up realizing that we're all the same. We all express the same emotions. We may have different languages. We may look different, but we are essentially all the same in this this world going through the human condition. That's it. That's it. And and you say like, um, you know, really clearly, um, you got off the hamster wheel, uh, you know, the American dream, goodbye, and... What what is what is the hamster wheel and the American dream by your definition? Everyone can kind of assume the matrix, etc. What's your definition, that? Mine would be just I, it might be the same in a lot of uh, different areas of the world, but in the United States in particular, it is very much so. Like you go to school, you go to college, you get the job, you stay at the job for job security, you work your way up, you you be a good little soldier. You go home and you have your white picket fence. You get the, the house. You have the car. You have the husband. When are, when are you having babies? When are those? And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm just like, it felt, I did. I actually bought the house in 2017. I renovated it. I had an amazing team at Ticketmaster of badass women. Uh, we were showcased at Dreamforce in 2018 in a number of keynotes. Like I was essentially living the dream. I just didn't have a husband and I didn't have kids, but I felt this weight. I just felt like I was accumulating more things and I felt more pressure. And I, I'm a very, I'm a Pisces. So I'm a very like spiritual, emotional, like fairy. And I was like, my wings were essentially being clipped. So I'm like, I just want, I want rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. You go on to say, quote, we or I, you could say we, sold 95% of our stuff and became digital nomads. Now, that's interesting. Quite a minimalist myself. Stuff is a burden. 
Even bricks and mortar businesses now are a burden. I love being online <laughs> and, you know, not not staying in backpacker hostels and doing the van life thing, but talk to me about minimalism. We're both still traveling with backpacks. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so no, no. Yeah. They'd be a little bit fancier, let's be honest. And Yeah, uh, so we, we will be honest. We're kind of like a, a bougie backpacker oh, couple, sure. and I, I actually have the domain. <laughs> the, oh, the best kind, really. <laughs> well, it, and it is like we aren't – we do appreciate all the budget travelers and we do want to inspire people at all levels to just travel because you can, it doesn't matter what your income is. There are ways to figure out how to travel. And the what amazing thing is that since we sold everything, we have all of that income and all of that money to invest directly to travel. So it's not like we're trying to maintain our household and all of the expenses at home and then having the expense of travel as well we've completely offset it. So we have all of this expense to allocate towards our travel on a monthly basis. And we sold probably more like 98%. Like we sold three homes, we sold three cars, we really? sold all of our furniture, all of our clothes. I want to really make a point of this. So you sold what? What, all your, you, you, you don't have a home now or you have investment properties or? No, they're all gone. We sold everything. We have a... I have a five foot by 10 foot storage locker in Vancouver. We have a five foot by 10 foot storage locker in Arizona with some family heirlooms and some art and some stuff that we wanted to keep, but the very little of nothing left. And we do, I travel with an Osprey backpack and a small carry on suitcase and a small to me backpack that is a carry on day pack. And that's all we have. And Ashley has pretty much the same. Fuck off. Yeah, no, we're down to nothing. Like I had, I had all my library. Yeah, I'm looking at all of your books behind you, and I'm like, we don't have any had, of that. I had the full <laughs> library of books. No, and it's I got fake rid of them anyway. I, it's a fake Zoom background or whatever. I haven't read any of them. <laughs> I've only, I've only read, I've only read one of them. You know, cha ching. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's the only one that matters. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, really, you sold everything. So, active versus passive income. What does that look like then? You don't know numbers, but. Well, I mean, past, like, I've got lots of investment income and Ashley has lots of investments as well. We buy our core stocks. We have crypto that we buy. I'm now, we're, you know, I'm established and set up legally in a tax-free zone. I'm resident of Dubai or the United Arab Emirates. My company is based in the United Arab Emirates. So I'm not paying corporate tax or personal tax, no dividend tax, no capital gains tax. And there's some, there's some expenses to do that. You know, I have to fly there every six months and um, but yeah, we have that in that income and then make money through her speaking and books and everything else. But like Ashley said, with, when you don't have a house, you don't have house insurance and mortgage and repairs and maintenance and utility bills that, that covers your Airbnb cost. When you don't have a car and car insurance and car payments and gas that covers your Uber or your Lime scooters. When you're not saving up for on vacation, cause you're on vacation every day, like today, you know, we're not technically going sightseeing everything in Paris, but the fact that we get to go for coffee and go for breakfast and wander around the city and go to the gym, we're seeing a cool new city. I'm not saving for vacation because life has become a perpetual vacation. So yeah, it's the offset has worked. Well, that's super inspiring. I must say, I'm not just saying that I'm, I'm stoked we've gone here like and talked about this stuff. Yeah, I, we we love it because... We would have never thought we'd be in this position when we first met, like when we started dating in 2018, like no one actually has relationship goals as being homeless. <laughs> we were essentially, we basically took the plunge on being homeless just probably six months before we got married in Mykonos in May 2022. Um, and it, it, it was definitely a process. So it's not easy. It It's very emotional, like going through all of your things. Like I probably went through five different rounds of purging and the first one was probably the hardest. Like I, I'm holding on to it, like hedging my bets. And I'm like, I don't want to drop it at Goodwill. But then I was like, I'm going to drive away from Goodwill, which is a donation center in the US. And um, I'm, I'm going to regret it. I'm going to want all my things back. But to be honest, it was strangely liberating. And every time that I went through the process again, it got easier and easier because really, if I put it in storage, uh, the stuff that I do have there, I have a little bit of clothes and stuff. If I, I decided I did not like this and I needed to go restart my life again, like there's some basics that I kept. I don't even know what's in there anymore. 
Like, I, I truly don't. I'd have to go through it all. And it's like, do we even really need it if I haven't even thought about it in six months to a year, yeah. right? So kids in the picture, Cam, uh, you got two kids? I've got two boys, one that's 21 and one that's 23. My 21-year-old is off to London in a week or two weeks for an exchange there this summer. And he's actually selected Singapore as where he wants to go uh... on his university exchange because he wants to be in the hub of Southeast Asia and go explore more. And he really wants to have a deeper experience culturally where he's just ripped out of his comfort zone. So he thinks that's going to be the one. And my youngest is living in Vancouver and working in the film industry. And I swing back, sorry, my oldest. Yeah. (laughs) And I swing back there and see them quite frequently. I was there last week and I'll see them again in, uh, in June. I love this. So this is a full empty nest plan. Um, You know, yeah, they're 21 and 23. We're having this, com- you know, we're having these conversations right now. You got two seventeen-year-old boys and about to be eighteen, and you know, um, uh, yeah. Uh, what is that? Hashtag couple goals. Um, yeah. So, example: I'm forty. I hate my job. I'm barely paying the bills. I feel like I'm choking. Three kids. Wife probably hates me. And I see this. I am a hamster on the wheel. I've got the mortgage. Advice: When I see you, when I when I see your stuff, Ashley, I'm envious. I hate you. <laughs> What's your advice, Pete? Um, you know, I will I will say that uh, having the kids is a whole different variable, and I don't even want to pretend to speak to that because I'm not an actual parent. I get to be a bonus mom to his two amazing kids, but they're actually fairly grown when I came into the picture, but there are certain hard conversations where you can sit down with your significant other and just kind of be like, does this make sense? Because there are a lot of places in the world that are far more economical than being in the United States where the money that you do have can go further. And, you know, I would try and figure out what skills do I have that can actually be done online or in a remote capacity whether it's like freelancing or something or going and taking a course. I know money's stretched, but how can I teach myself on YouTube university a skill that's highly in demand? And um, because I think parents who do actually travel with their kids extensively, it's such a beautiful gift for the kids. I know it's harder on the parents, but it's such a beautiful gift. And there's no better education that a kid is going to get than being immersed in the world outside of their little bubble. Here's the pyramids in a book or here's the pyramids. Let's touch it. <laughs> Let's go inside it. <laughs> you know? well, your, your bucket list items when you're running that kind of a hamster wheel, 40 year old and you know, embroiled in debt, it can also be what are the things that you can sell that you can use some of that cash? Can you start selling stuff on Facebook marketplace that you really don't need? Can you go through your garage and your storage and your closets and start selling stuff? My son sells everything and I give him 25% of my stuff that he sells, but that's one way. You can also take a look, as Ashley mentioned online, just to learn things like you can learn how to get in shape. You can learn Mike Chang's, you know, flow exercise and do that in the morning for free. You can, um, you know, do geocaching and go explore your city for free. You can take a look at the, the street art that's out in your city and go walk around and do that stuff. You can learn how to play guitar and buy an old guitar on Facebook for a hundred bucks and do free guitar lessons online till the cows come home. But I think people need to, you know, stop sitting down and just watching aimless TV all day long and decide what they want to do with their lives. And, and that some of that decisions is, do you really need to buy the six TVs that you have in your home or you can get, can you get away with just one Starbucks every day? Yeah. Do you need the Starbucks every day? Like it's, it's about making those, priority decisions in your life and and um and i would start with with writing the vivid vision for your life which we've done i would start with creating the bucket list vision board like you've got to inspire you and get your kids to do those and then have your kids write a bucket list have your wife write a bucket list and sit down and then share them and combine them that's why we've combined our bucket lists and we share them with the world is to hold ourselves accountable to doing more and to inspire us. So I always read Ashley's bucket list to see what's on it. And she reads mine to see what's on it to help each other get more done, right? <laughs> We're doing what? Um, <laughs> take my clothes off? Yeah, number 47 on the list, Cameron Jesus. So now that, like, 
that's the thing, right? Like these, the, what you just said, what you both just said is priceless. And I hope people go back and like rewind the last like five minutes of what was just said. That advice is priceless because the watchers and the listeners of the Bucket List Life podcast, you're here for a reason. So go back, grab the pen and paper and make some notes. And it is doable. That's what we're trying to say. No matter your circumstance in life, it is doable. The skills are there. The things are there to to be taught. But you've got to decide. You've got to decide you want a better life. You've got to, you've got to decide to go, no, I don't want to be in this situation anymore. Yeah, if there's a will, there's a way. And if we really get honest with ourselves and reflect back on it, majority of the rebuttals, they're essentially excuses in disguise, right? So you just got to get real honest with yourself and do you want to do the work I to get there? This mic. I could drop this mic, uh, but uh, it would make a hell of a noise. So <laughs> that is the mic drop moment right there. What about when you turn up to a place somewhere like Paris, where you are right now, and do something that wasn't on the bucket list? Do you claim it? Do you add it retrospectively? You do. Yep. So there are bucket list items that we didn't know were going to be bucket list items. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. I don't. I don't tend to add those to my bucket list as items that I've done, but I definitely appreciate the fact that I've been able to do them. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. For example. Like just one that comes to my mind very quickly is that National Parks and Forest Tour we did in 2021. I probably spent about 80 to 100 hours uh, planning that because we were moving every like two, three days and doing like 35, 40,000 step hikes. Uh, but a friend of mine told me to go to Moab and do the rock qua- crawling in those like Polaris, Kawasaki buggies. Um And I mean, you're going up and you're going straight down and these things are eating up the rocks and like your, your stomach's in your throat. You're like, I can't see. And it was so much fun. Like one of the best days. I think there is something there that people should actually add to your point. Maybe I will go back and retroactively do it because Ashley's pointed out to me, I have done so much over my life and so much with all of my travels. I'd traveled a lot before that she and I had met that I think I really do owe it to myself to capture those moments that I didn't know were bucket list at the time. And like I I went scuba diving on the Ayers Reef and, you know, did night diving and saw sharks. And I never wrote that down as a bucket list item, but it certainly is crazy, right? Who knew we'd have a silent disco with penguins and whales on Antarctica? Couldn't have dreamed that up. (laughs) God damn it. Um, well, and, and writing down writing down some of those bucket list things that you've done, even though they maybe weren't on your bucket list at the time, maybe inspires you to do more. Totally does. I in, in the in the book, uh, like I said, I've been doing this stuff for thirteen years, and there's a lot of people who have done a lot of cool stuff in their life, but it wasn't on a bucket list officially. And that's the theme of when I go into keynotes as well. I say, okay, there's three kinds of bucket lists. One is the future bucket list in the future, all the stuff that you want to do. Two is a reverse bucket list. That's uh, all the stuff that you've done. And we cool. actually build that out first as a big gratitude exercise. And for a lot of people, we make even a visual reverse bucket list board out of that too, because that's what they play at your funeral, right? I love that. That's a great idea. And as a result, you know, and, and, and gratitude is one of the pillars, pillars of positive psychology, right? And underpinning everything I've ever spoken about is positive psychology. I went through depression. Instead of going on heavy antidepressants and, you know, putting a Band-Aid, Band-Aid, giving it a Band-Aid fix, I dove straight into trying to find the cause, not just deal with the effect. And so um, found positive psychology nlp did all the you know burning man ayahuasca as well walked on fire with big tony you know did it all still going but worked out some stuff and you know the personal development journey um but travel you know and, and it wasn't until i did my first presentation someone actually called me the bucket list guy like 13 years ago because of all this i had a list to do before i die actually written down since i was 18 
about 13 years ago, I started sharing the fact that I had one. It was always my true north and it helped me really get out of bed in the morning, gave me a reason to get out of bed in the morning, especially in those dark times. As a result, when someone called me the bucket list, they said, isn't that all about trouble? And we know it's not. So it's like, all right, well, claim the stuff that you've already done in your life as if it were on a bucket list all the way along. And we do that first. So as a result, we have people write down what's on your reverse bucket list before we like we go put more stuff on your to do to do list. Let's reflect back. And some people I say, okay, give me five items that you've done, five things that you've done in your life as if it were on a bucket list all the way along. Most people tap out at three. They can't even think of five. We live in such a forward-facing world that we forget about what we've actually done. Right. Yeah. We're always caught in the gap. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you scratch, when you, you know, um, unpack that for a lot of people, like, oh, yeah, I've had a pretty cool life. I'm glad I've actually done that. Challenge accepted for me. I will definitely do it. Dude. And, idea. And, it, and it really and it really gives a, a, a person a, a strong foundation um, for the future. You know, rather uh-huh. than living by the default, we're now living by intentional design. Well, Ashley's done an amazing job documenting our yeah. journeys and our. I know it's list. unreal, Un- unreal. Her YouTube, her YouTube videos are incredible. I know that's why I want to. Is she available for hire? I'd love to get a vi- uh, editing I, skill. I actually have <laughs> uh, two things I wanted to say about that. I am extremely privileged and grateful that I have the capacity to not only plan and do all the logistics for a bucket list dream life, like this whole thing doesn't work without one of us. So I'm the captain, he's sort of the engine uh, and makes it happen. But I I dream it up and I I do it all. Like I manage our life out of a Google sheet, which is um, pretty crazy. So I'm glad that I am afforded the ability to actually document it all. Because what it helps is I was always that person that lived in in the future. I never went past and I was never in the present. I was always like, what's next? I didn't even go through my camera roll. I'm like, I took the things and then I never actually went and crystallized them. Mm-hmm. This whole content creation process has now allowed me to crystallize a lot of my memories and my experiences because I so have good. to go through it multiple times to do the videos. So it helped. It helps soak it in further, which I absolutely love. And just so I give credit, I do have a long form video editor that helps me in Ukraine. And I have an amazing social media manager in uh, South Africa. So I love all the creativity and design stuff. Have you done acid yet, guys? You're doing acid together soon. I have done acid a few times. Definitely done acid at Burning Man. Um, it's a great mind opener, great kind of life expander. It's incredibly beautiful. I I have not. I've only done a micro a while ago. I'm just a little apprehensive of the time commitment, but I did do a really big um, hero's dose of psilocybin probably a month ago, and then we've got three uh, he's with got the shaman two. With yeah the shaman. yeah yeah like not we, we everything's medicinal at this point it's not like recreational um but i've got three aya ceremonies and he's got two on the books and it'll be like our first real time doing that this year i think if you say the word shaman and plant medicine in front of everything you're good to go you're right I mean, yeah. we're, right? We're, well, Tulum, they're like, yeah, I'm I'm doing journeys every day on the beach. It's yeah, like, yeah. no, you're just doing drugs on the you're beach. It's like burning out of the beach. <laughs> you make it feel good for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look, love it, love it, love it. Let's uh, let's try and wrap this up. The third list that I, I I I want to dovetail into your removed list. The third list, again in the book, we got the future, we got the reverse, but we've also got. The third list, which is called the fuck it list. Mm-hmm. Now, you put your remove list on. Is that become because you become you know more mature, or just you know how do you put something on the remo- when do you remove it? For me, it was like at one point in my life, those um, those things were important to me. Those characteristics, those experiences, and as I've gotten older, you know, it, it just really isn't applicable. If I in my twenties. I would have guessed that I was actually, I had no house, no like stability traveling full time. Like that was unfathomable, like couldn't have even dreamt it up. So, you know, it it was one that I had at one point in my life, but now it's like, probably if it happened, cool, but it's no longer something that I have to do before I die. 
we evolve, right? <laughs> love it, love it. Guys, we'll, uh, we'll wrap things up. You know, there's so many more uh, things that I want to ask. But I, I think, what do you want people to do? Um, you know, because, look, I could say go and – how do people start this process of creating a bucket list life? And what is a bucket list life in your definition? I'll get one individually. <laughs> I'll just start. Me, I would actually sit down and, um, I mean, you can – look at ours or I'm, I don't know if you've published yours, but for inspiration. And I actually, my lead magnet, if you sign up for the email list, I do give you a, a brief template. I'm sure you probably have one, but just read one for inspiration. And it would probably actually be sitting down and thinking about what is on your bucket list. And then, you know, going through that exercise gets you all jazzed. Like you get excited and you're like, now I want to actually cross off some of these. And then you kind of figure out the the how. Like you don't have to figure out the how now. Just figure out the why and the what and the how will come. 100%. 100%. And, and Cameron, I mean, vivid vision, what is a bucket list life for you? For me, it was sitting down and just looking at every aspect of my life and what mattered. So around health, around travel, around friends, around finance, around spirituality, around sexuality, around you know, vacations around growth and just describing myself a few years in the future, describing every aspect of my life, describing me three years from now, Ashley and I writing a vivid vision for our marriage, describing us as a couple three years from now, and then reverse engineering that and figuring out all the ways to make that come true. In the bucket list sense for me, it's things like, what are the things that I want to try? What are the experiences I want to have? What are the places I want to go? and writing them in vivid detail. So for, for me, one good example of that was I always wanted to drive a Porsche on the Autobahn. And it was, it was because I wanted to drive with no speed limit. And then Ashley, when she saw drive a Porsche on the Autobahn, found a, a five-day Porsche tour through Western Europe in four countries with 10 couples. And I got to hit 268 kilometers an hour, 165 miles an hour on the Autobahn in a Porsche. So when you, when you describe it in a vivid way without worrying about how it's going to come true, you just kind of conceive, believe, and achieve, right? It's writing it down and then buying into it. You'll figure it out. But also sharing it, but also, also sharing it uh, publicly helps be, uh, because, one, people want to get on the journey with you possibly, and, two, you never know where the resource is going to show up in order to make yeah, that exactly. flat the so, time frame. I have a couple of things. I, like, to his point and your point, it doesn't have to be travel based. So on both of our bucket lists, I don't know if you do yours, but on mine, the very first column is sort of like a category for me. Yeah. Is it financial? Is it self improvement? Is it travel? Is it an experience? Is it fun? Um, so I kind of detail out the the category of the bucket list item, and then also the vivid vision of our relationship is also published on the website, which is also in ways I find a little more vulnerable than the bucket list items. Uh, so you can definitely go on there to um, read it and check it out. It's a very fun or cool exercise. It can it can overturn. It can like bring up some things that you're gonna have to talk through, um, just to make sure that both parties' visions are aligned. So it does open up the facilitation of conversations. Yeah, yeah. Your vi your vivid vision, your bucket list is what you might want to have a therapist on that, speed dial. No... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My one therapist lets me dial just, just for that process, but it's very beautiful once it's done because it's a beautiful, beautiful document. And then we kind of know where we are going. Yeah. Yeah. I really do, really do like how you've publicly put it out there, how everything's on there, when you've done it, what's to do. And I look at it and go, how, how can I help you? How can I help you? So when you're in Australia, you know, I can, you know, really help you. You know, what's crazy is I've now been investing a lot into the power of the universe as well. Like I used to fight against the universe. I'm like, I will muscle my way through this because I want it. And it's like, I'm trying to pull on the door, pull the door. And it's like, no, it's actually push. And perfect example is like after Antarctica, I was like, I really want to go to the Arctic and I want to go in one of those icebreaker ships. And to a full circle, go abundance. Uh, we have a friend named Patrick Cullinane. Happened to reach out like three weeks ago. Yeah, three weeks ago, and we're uh, we're like we would love to see you because we went to Antarctica together. 
And he's like, well, do you want to go to Europe? Um, and she sent us this thing for this um, event called Wow is Now Daybreakers. And they're going up to the Arctic. And so we last minute did a trip to the, we're going to do a trip to the Arctic at the end of June. And it was like the universe kind of just like brought it to us. So you put it out there and it's amazing how it just sort of the world conspires to help you achieve it. Uh, unreal. Love it. Thank you so much for being on the show. QT, thank you so much. Uh, how can <laughs> Cameron, how can people uh, connect with you, bro? Yeah, easiest way is the CameronHerald.com and it's H-E-R-O-L-D.com and then all of my books are available on Amazon, Audible and iTunes. Koala, how can we do it? Yes, everything for me is ever wander travel and that's wander with an A, so not wonder, W-A-N-D-E-R on all all platforms. Love it, Ashley. Very, very good. Thanks so much for... Uh for being you and thank you so much for inspiring me and i know you've inspired others as well so thanks heaps guys until next thanks, time Robert. Yeah. thanks for being thank a part you. of the podcast, for Life podcast. You. see you in melbourne thanks so much for listening to the bucket list life podcast with the world's number one bucket list expert trav bell for more great content go to www.thebucketlistguy.com we'll see you next time